How many of you, God's been good to you? Why don't you raise your hand and say, God, you are good to me. God, you've been good to me. You're so faithful, Lord. We love you. Thank you for putting your goodness on display for us. God, we love you. God, we love you. You know, it's so important what Amanda was saying about praise and how we lift our voices to God. It's important that you you hear yourself say, God, you are good to me. You need to say that to yourself. The Bible talks about in Psalm 8, you may have heard this, that praise, it steals the enemy. You know that when you hear the voice of the enemy talking, and he's talking, there's a lot of voices in this world. He's talking. You know the one thing that will shut him up? Your praise. When you start praising God with, with your words, when words of praise start coming out of your mouth, it silences the voice of the enemy. In one translation, it says it has the power to shut the mouth of the enemy. You can't be hearing what he's saying when you're saying what God's saying, right? God's been good to me. Man, when the enemy's voice is amplified in your ear, you need to, you need to open your mouth and you need to say what you believe about God. He's been good to me. He's been good to you, amen? Amen. Give someone a high five real quick before you sit down. Say, God's been good to me. Yeah, he has. Thanks, worship team. God has been good to me. Well, hey, if you happen to stumble in late, let me go ahead and give you, give you another welcome. Welcome to Beyond Church. Man, we love Jesus here. We love Jesus and we love people here. So I'm so glad to have you. If you're joining us online, thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Landon. I'm one of the pastors on staff here. Uh, on behalf of Pastors Nate and Evan, they send their love and say they, they love you. I guess that's what you say when they, you send your love. So love you guys. And uh, we're going to take a moment here, here in a minute and uh, to receive our tithes and offerings. If you came ready to do that, if you do that the old-fashioned way, there's envelopes on the seat back in front of you. You can, you can fill those out and get ready. Uh, and you can also go online, beyondchurch.org, and you can give there for those of you new age folk. All right? You can do that there, and uh, we got it all set up and ready for you. Uh, hey, if, if you're new around here, maybe you've been here once, twice, a few times, but, but you're just kind of uh, filling it out, maybe getting to know people a little bit, we would love to get to know you a little bit better and just say thanks for coming. If you would do us the honor, there's a card on the seat back in front of you. If you can just fill that out, we're not going to overload your, your email, your mailbox. I don't know if mailboxes get overloaded anymore, but we just want to say thanks for coming. Uh, we believe, and Pastor Nate says this all the time, we believe there's a reason that God brought you here. And uh, we, would we would love to help you figure out what that was. Uh, but we believe every person has a place in the body of Christ. And if this isn't your place, our prayer is that you would find that place. And you would get in your place because the body of Christ needs you. Right? So uh, do that for us. But let's receive our tithes and offerings real quick. Before we do that, I want to, uh, I want to give you a few announcements uh, about what's going on around here. Yeah, you see this on the screen back here. This is when you go online and give. For those of you who haven't seen this in a while, that little green icon down there, that's on every page on our website. So it's real easy if you want to do it that way. But let me tell you what's going on around here. We've got an awesome outreach event coming up here in a few weeks. In fact, part of it's going to start next Saturday. Look at this, Grinchmas. Who, now, when you just hear the word Grinchmas, you just want to be a part of that, right? I mean, I know I do. I mean, this is going to be an awesome outreach opportunity that we have. We're going to do this down at the Boys and Girls Club. You can see the date up here. It's going to be on December the 7th at 430. But what we're going to be doing is uh, this is going to be a movie experience. We're going to bring our uh, huge screen out, take our projector down there, and we're going to show the Grinch, uh, the new Grinch that came out. How, how many of you saw the new Grinch that came out last year? How adorable is that movie? Wow, you people are dead inside. Come on, don't you have Jesus in here? It was adorable. I, uh, when I saw it for the first time in theaters, I'm not going to lie, at the very end, I did shed a tear. I'm not afraid to admit it. Yes, I know. I'm very sensitive. And, uh, yeah, my heart grew a few sizes. That's right. Yes, it did. It did. But uh, we're going to be showing this movie, and it really has a great message at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put this on display, being kind and just, and just taking the love of Jesus downtown. And what, what the uh, target audience that we have is uh, the families in the downtown Alma area. So kind of around the Boys and Girls Club there. So what we have going on this Saturday is we're going to go blitz downtown with some invitations saying, hey, come 
come be a part of this. We want to love you. We're going to have all kinds of, we're going to have food. We're going to have, um, I think the Grinch may be there. Yeah, yeah, the, the real Grinch. He's real. So he may be there. Um, uh, but we're going to have all kinds of goodies and get a love on kids. So we've got a lot of different opportunities for you to come uh, and be a part. Uh, you can sign up at the Connection Center or online at beyondchurch.org. But sign up and come be a part of this. Uh, it's going to be so amazing to do this. And we even have a little uh, salvation message where we give kids the opportunity to give their lives to God. Man, how amazing is that? And you can do that through showing a movie. Can you believe that? Man, we're just going to preach the gospel, whatever we do, wherever we go, using the love of God, right? Yeah. All right, here's another thing we have coming up. Uh, first Wednesday, the first Wednesday of December is December the 4th. Everyone say December 4th. Yeah, so that's the first Wednesday of December, and what we do on these, these are fun nights, and uh, I want you to plan to be a part of it, uh, but we also have an opportunity for you to come and eat and fellowship with each other before, uh, and that's Chick-fil-A, <laughs> praise God, and Geno's. Chick-fil-A and Geno. So if you are interested in kind of fellowshipping with us beforehand, you can go on here, you can click on here, and you can say, yes, I want to, uh, I want to get my Chick-fil-A ordered or Geno's ordered. You've got to order it uh, through here if you want to be a part of that because um, you can't get here and say, I want Chick-fil-A. We're not driving to Fort Smith for you. So uh, we'll do it beforehand, okay? It's going to be fun, right? And if you weren't here last week or maybe, uh, like I said, you're new here, and you came to the 9 o'clock, this is not going to happen next Sunday. Next Sunday, we are going to one service. Yeah, not just for next Sunday, but we are, we are making a shift. Our church is going to one service. We're not going to uh, have 9 and 1030 anymore. We're going to do one service starting next week at 10 o'clock. It's going to be good. So look around. Everyone look around. See those seats beside you? We're going to fill them in with the rest of our family. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to bring more people in. And you know what I hope? I hope we just pack this place out to where we just have to keep adding chairs and finding creative ways to get people in here, right? And uh, so it's going to be amazing. So say 10 o'clock next week. I won't be late. I will be early. All right, you said it. You said it. All right, so that's going to – how many are excited about that? That's going to be a fun time, right? Hey, and then last but not least, we have been doing, we've been talking to you about this, our blessing baskets. So this is another outreach we're doing. Aren't you glad that we're doing these outreaches right now? I know it's the holiday season. I know people have plans and they're busy, but these are the types of things that we can be filling our calendars with because this is uh, us being the hands and feet of Jesus. This is why we're called to do what we do. Right, And so we are putting some holiday blessing baskets together with some food, some gift cards, and we're going to go bless families uh, on December the 15th. December the 15th. And check this out. We are halfway there. We are halfway there. It's $50 a basket. And so if you are wanting to give towards that, there's an option for you to do that. Uh, but we're going to reach our goal. We're going to reach our goal, and we are going to bless 150 families uh, over the holidays for Christmas. Don't you want to be a part of that? I know I do. Hey, let's pray real quick while we receive our tithes and offerings. Ushers, come on. Father, thank you so much for how good you are to us. We love you. We're so thankful and honored that we get to be a part of, of this local body of believers that you've placed here in Alma, Arkansas. Uh, and we just thank you for the opportunity that we get to, to sow into your kingdom and to see the lives of people change forever. Lord, we're honored, and thank you for calling us to be a part of that. We love you. We call these tithes and offerings blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.
button. Hello, hello, check, check, you got me? Hello. It's not on, it says it's muted. That's why we need techies in our church. Classic youth pastor move well, right there. Did, 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 did somebody say just hit the on off button? Because that's what I heard. I did not see the big mute button on the top. <laughs> just hit the on off button. Okay. Anyway, well, I am glad to be at church this morning. And I know that you are too. And if you ask me, we're in the best church in the United States of America. <laughs> I love this church. I love that uh, this is where God's called me. And uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Ben. I get to be the youth pastor here at Beyond Church with my beautiful wife, Joni. And uh, we just love what we get to do. And I'll tell you, when you're doing what God's called you to do, you'll love it. It's awesome. It's amazing. You get to see God do extraordinary things. And, um, you know, this morning as, as, as we're coming in and I'm listening to the, the worship set and Everything, like, I don't believe that I told you anything about what we were talking about this week, and uh, they nailed it right on the head with just what's been stirring in my heart, and um, so it it just is cool to me to watch how God sets things up, and um, he he brings things forward, and and I didn't say anything to anybody about what I was going to be talking about this morning, and the the worship was right on the key. So um, anyway, if you're in church this morning, we're going to jump into the Word of God, because how many of you know this is church and we should read the Bible in church, shouldn't we? Let me get opened up here. Um, and as I was uh, in my office studying a little bit yesterday, um, how many of you guys know that the seasons are changing? You know, it's funny. I walked outside this morning and all the frost was on the ground. And my little boy Carson, he goes, Colton, the trees are naked. <laughs> He's like, look at the trees, they don't have any leaves on. <laughs> and he's just laughing so hard. And uh, it, it, it made me laugh because what I had heard in my heart yesterday as I was watching, there's a big tree outside of my office across the street. And a week ago, this whole thing was orange. And now it's about three quarters of the way, all the leaves are gone. And as, as every wind would come by, them leaves would fall off. And I heard this in my heart for somebody in here, maybe for all of you today, but the Lord just said this to me. He said, the leaves are falling, the seasons are changing. Are you ready for change? And I think sometimes when we come to church, a lot of times when we come to church, we sit in the same seat, we talk to the same people, we come with our same expectation, and it's to hear a good, a good message, and maybe that's you today, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe you're the person that would come up to me after a service or, or up to pastors when they're here, and, uh, you know, as, as somebody that would uh, speak the word, you know, you might hear it from somebody, that was a good word today. Really? Well, what was good about it? Like, if we're not going to take what we hear and apply it to our lives, then what makes it a good word? What's going to make it a good word in your life is when we begin to apply it to our lives. And so, uh, this morning, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was the plan of God. And I know that every person in here has heard, uh, I would venture to say, you've heard this before, that God has a plan for you. If if you've heard that, I want to see your hands. So the vast majority, we live in the greatest, the greatest country in the entire world, and, and, and the gospel is freely preached here. And so, you know, from a young age all the way to the, 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 the older people, you know, the, uh, we've heard these things. It, it's kind of become a part of our culture. We, we hear these things. God loves you. God has a plan for you. You know that God doesn't love you. God so loves you. And there's a difference, you know. And uh, so what I've entitled this message this morning is this. The plan is the promise. Everybody say, the plan is the promise. Uh, if you have your Bibles, open them up to Second um, Peter. And actually, before I do this, I just want to, I want to just pray for a second. Father, I just, I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, you've been talking to me about all this stuff, and there's so many ways that I could go with this message, and so I'm asking you to just give me the way, the words that this body this morning needs to hear. The people that are sitting here, you know where every state of life is in this room. And so I'm asking you for the words, Holy Spirit, to speak through me. 
that these people wouldn't be here to hear me, they'd be here to hear you. And I thank you, Lord, that you are speaking and our ears are in tune. There's no noise. We hear your voice and we follow what you say in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So the plan is the promise. In 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, it starts out, it says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have all received this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. So functioning in his promises is what enables us to share in his divine nature. I got to have his promise if I'm going to function in his divine nature, right? And so um, go to uh, 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 20, we were just singing this. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. I've got an exclamation point after that. Yes! God is a yes God. Okay? And uh, anybody ever uh, seen Tim Hawkins? He talks about cats and dogs and how cats are for no people, you know. No. You know. (laughs) Dogs are yes, yes. Yes, 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 you know, waving the tail and everything. <laughs> For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, and through Christ our amen, which, is, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. Everybody say, all of his promises, all of his promises. are yes and, amen. Yes, yes, yes and amen. Yes and amen. Oh, man. Okay, so we're dealing with a God that is a yes and amen God. So God's got a plan, and he's created you and I for a purpose. And in order for me to walk in that plan and to function in that purpose, I got to see things the way that he sees them. I got to get his word on the subject. Amen? And so we're going to start this out by playing a little bit of a game. I'm going to give some words to describe something, and I want you to tell me what this something is. So number one is this, uh, rubber, metal, carpet, light bulbs, leather, radio, keys, gasoline, Everybody's going, car, 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 car. (laughs) That's what it is. It's a car, okay? All right, number two. Tall, yellow, patterned, long neck, giraffe, giraffe, right? Okay, number three. This is the final one. Check this out. (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, Explore, direction, path, guide, search, scout. Not airplane. Journey. Journey? Does that sound like a journey? Sounds like a GPS. Sounds like a journey. I'm the one teaching here today. No. (laughs) Just listen to this. I want you to hear these words. Explore. Direction. Path. Guide. Search. Scout. Journey. Those are all words that you will find in here. Would it seem to reason to me, maybe that ain't the right way to say that, what seems, it seems to me that God is saying, I want to take you somewhere. I got somewhere for you to go. And so he gives us these kind of words, you know. Explore, direction, path, guide, search, and scout. You know, the plan is the promise. And real change always begins with a plan. You can say you want to lose weight. If you don't write a plan out, you won't be losing any weight. Promise. You'll go out to eat the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. You want to save up for, for, for savings or whatever. If you don't set a plan in place where you say, you know what, Every time I make $100, $10 goes to this or whatever. You don't set a plan in place, you won't save. It just won't happen. Benjamin Franklin said, um, failing to plan is planning to fail. And so uh, this morning, I wanted to just kind of talk to you about this plan. Um, I wrote down in my notes that God's not interested in me just exploring his plants. He wants me possessing them. 
uh, God's plan for me is his promise to me. You know, we got a lot of people, especially in our world today, that say, is it God's will? Well, what that's saying is you're lazy. You don't want to find out. This book is full of promises. But if you never read it, you'll never know the promises that God has for you. And that's not on God, that's on you, because he's provided the book. In fact, this book is like outlawed all over the world, but in America, it sits all over our couches and our tables and bookshelves and collects dust, and it's boring, and we don't want to read it because, uh, and you know, I, I'm busy, I got a lot going on, I don't want to, so boring to sit down and read God's word. Not if you know that it's full of promises. Not if you know that God has something for me. The plan is the promise. You know, James 1.22 says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says, otherwise you're fooling yourselves. You know, we can sit in church and we can hear a good message today, but if you don't take any application and go, you know what, I'm going to take God's word, I'm going to find out his promises for me and realize that his promise for me is his plan to me. If I want to walk in his plan, then I've got to know his promise. Amen? And so uh, this morning, what I want to do is look at uh, numbers. Well, actually, hold on. Let me set this up. Um, so I just wrote down in my notes that there's three things that we must know in order to function in the plan of God. And that's number one, this, this that God planned for me before. Jeremiah chapter one, if you can open up your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter one. And realize that this is God's way of doing things. He, do, he did this with every single person in this room today. It says in verse 5, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and I appointed you as my prophet to the nations. But listen to this. This is verse 6. It says, oh, sovereign Lord, I, I said, I can't speak for I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young. For you must go wherever I send. Listen listen to this. You must. Please don't stand and contend with God that you're not capable. You can't do what he asked you to do. You won't do what he asked you to do. Please don't be that person. But unfortunately, our humanity, that's kind of how we are. We feel like we're incapable. We feel like we can't do it. We feel like we're not good enough or I'm not gifted enough or... I'm not strong enough, or whatever it is that you're not enough of. And God goes, I get that, but I'm with you. And so through me, you can do all things, right? And so he says, "Uh, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. That sounds a lot like Jesus, doesn't it? I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only say what the Father tells me to say. And don't be afraid of the people. How many of you guys know that if there's anything in this planet that we're afraid of, it's people, I don't know why that is. We're so afraid of people, and we are a person. We're people. We all have our problems. We all have our issues. We all have our downfalls. Everybody that you're sitting around is pretty much exactly like you are. They may have different giftings. They may look different. They may have different tastes in life and whatnot, but they deal with the same struggles that you deal with because we're all people. It says, I will be with you. I will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. And then the Lord reached out his hand and he touched my mouth and he said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I'm watching and I will certainly carry out all my what? Plans. God has a plan for you to carry out, and it's his plan. Amen? So I want, I want you to ask yourself, what, whose plan am I carrying out? You know what I'm saying? This is an important question for us to ask. So number one, God planned for me before. Number two, his plan for me is good. Can I get Jeremiah 29, 11 up there in the message, please? <clears throat> I didn't bring my message Bible. This is the message that the God of angel armies, oh, I'm sorry, uh, this is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. Fact. I have it all planned out. Fact. Plans to take care of you. Fact. Not abandon you. Fact. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. Fact. This is God talking. I have it all planned. Oh, keep going. Keep going. 
Uh, when you call on me, when you come to me and, uh, when, and pray to me, I'll listen. That's a fact. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. That's a fact. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. That's God's decree. Amen? Amen. That's good. So number one, God planned for me before. Number two, his plan for me is good. And number three, he is with me all the way. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse five. I actually didn't give this one to you guys and I'm sorry about that. So I'll just turn to it really quick here. Oh, I went past it. Is it up there? Sorry. Hebrews 13. I'm just gonna quote it. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never abandon you. Yeah. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have for God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. That's God talking to you. And I need you to hear that this morning, that he'll never fail you. He'll never abandon you, ever. It doesn't matter how far you run away from him, he will never fail you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never leave. He's that good. Amen? Amen. And so this morning, I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes this is what we got, 15 minutes, and we're going to rock and roll. Y'all ready for this? In Numbers chapter 13, and I want to kind of just show you a little bit of a picture here. So I've got my binoculars. I'm a deer hunter. This is a tool that we use as deer hunters or whatever. How many of you guys have ever looked through a pair of binoculars? So what's the purpose of looking through a pair of binoculars? You can see further. You can see clearer. You can see what's far away can be brought close. And so many times, as believers, we're looking through God's plans this way, backwards. And we go, man, it's so far away, God. I can't, I want that. I don't know how I can have that. It's so far out there. And God says, turn them around and look through them the right way. And you'll find that you can see what's far becomes close. And you can get an accurate picture. I was just talking to a, uh, I wasn't talking to him, but I was, I follow uh, one of my good friends from up in Minnesota. He, he goes hunting in Alaska every, every year. And um, he, was, he was just talking about having good optics when you're out there because the, the ground is so vast and huge and mass, you know, just, it's crazy. It's Alaska. And he was saying one thing that he's learned from the guy that he, he goes with, he goes to help this guy, you know, clean out his animals and all that kind of stuff. He said, slow down when you're looking. Because a lot of us, when we're looking, we kind of look quick, you know, and we go from one side to the other and we're moving quick. And he said, slow down, put them up and, and look through that and really look it over. And make sure that you're seeing everything that's there. Because how many of you guys know, especially as a hunter, if a white tail is standing in the woods and it's just standing there, you'll walk right past them and they won't even move. And you won't see them unless they move. But if you, if you, if you sit and watch a place long enough, usually if there's a white tail there, its tail will flap or it'll take a step or it'll flip its ear and you'll see something. Oh, there's something there. I already went past that, but there was actually something there. Well, how many times do we do this with God's plan concerning us? We, uh, as we're going to read in the story, God gives the, the direction to go explore the land to the, to the children of Israel. And I believe that they were exploring it with their binoculars backwards. And they didn't really see what was there, like they should have been seeing what was there. And so we're going to see this morning... <clears throat> In verse, verse 1 of, of Numbers chapter 13, it says, The Lord <clears throat> said to Moses, Send out men to explore the land of Canaan. Now, that's not all he said. What did he go on to say? The land I am giving the Israelites. So that's important. That's plan. Okay? God has a plan for you. Everybody say, God has a plan for me. God's not interested in you just going and exploring. Oh, let's just go explore. No, God wants you to explore with the intention of possessing. And so the Israelites, they go out, and we'll just kind of keep reading here, and you'll see this unfold. It says, 
the land that I'm giving the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. He sent out 12 men, all the tribal leaders of Israel, from their camp in the wilderness of Paran. These were the tribes and the names of the leaders. I'm just going to jump to verse 16. These are the names of the men Moses sent out to explore the land. In verse 17 it says, Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. Go north through the Negev into the hill country and see what the land is like and find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many, and see what kind of land that they live in. Is it good or bad? Do the towns have walls or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the, fertile, is, is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? Do your best to bring back samples of the crops that you see. So they went up, this is verse 21, so they went up and explored the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob. <clears throat> Goes through all these different places. And it says this, it says um, in verse 22, going north, they passed through the Negev and arrived at Hebron where a he, a he man, uh, Shishai and Talamai, all descendants of Anak, lived. Now, how many of you guys know who the descendants of Anak are? These are giants. So, guys go in, exploring the land, exploring. God says, I, go, go check out the land that I'm giving you. Now, imagine this. I want you to picture this, that you're an Arkansas person, and God says, I want you to go explore the land that's yours. And so you go out to the, the, the post of, of this property that you've never seen before, and you start scanning it, and all of a sudden it says, no trespassing. And you see the name's signature, and it says, Jonathan Dean? And you're like, I'm Jonathan Dean. So you go down you know, 100 yards or whatever, and no trespassing. John, Jonathan Dean. And you begin to see all this land with your name on it. But you do what the children of Israel do. And you go, I can't have that. That's not mine. And they begin to, in a sense, bicker with God. And they find out all the reasons why they can't do what God said to do. And I need you to know today, as you're sitting in church, that God has a plan for you. And in the plan is included what we would like to call obstacles. Obstacles. Now, you can look at them as an obstacle, or you can look at them as an opportunity. But a lot of times what we do is we look at what God has planned for us as an obstacle. I can't because it's hard. I don't have the money. I, I don't have the resource. I don't, I don't know people. Whatever it is, and we come up with all our reasons why something cannot be done. And this is what we table with God. I explored the land. Well, did you explore it with the, reason, uh, with the reasoning of I'm going to go and possess what God said is rightfully mine? Because at this time, 400 years had passed by. They had been living in Egypt, and somebody else was developing their land. Building their homes, building their walls, all their storefront. Everything was being built and was on the title name in somebody else's name. But God said, actually, that is your land and you need to go in there and possess it. He didn't tell them, I want you to go explore it and come back and tell me all the reasons why it can't be done. He said, I want you to go and explore the land, the land that I am giving you. God has a land for you. And God is giving you a land. And what does it look like? It looks like his promise. It's promised land. Okay? Everybody say promised land. If you want to walk in what God has for you, you're going to have to get a hold of the promise that he has for you. And so many times what we do is we approach the land. And instead of exploring it the right way, looking at it through the lens of backwards, like it's so far away. I don't know how I can reach that. I don't know how I could ever possess that. The walls are big. There's giants in the land. Guys, when it says there's giants in the land, it's talking about three of them. You know how many people there were? 600 plus thousand warriors alone. And they're worried about three. This is what the enemy does to people. He causes you to see things in the wrong light. He takes God's plan for you and he goes, it's too big. It can't be done. It's too hard. There's way too many obstacles. And if we would be like Joshua and Caleb in this story who said, we can go possess it right now. Let's go. I want to ask you, who are you in this story? 
Because I think we would love to, to come to church today and say, I've got it together. I'm walking in the fullness. I'm doing what God said to do. But there's many of us that are in the probably 80 or 85%, whatever it is, there was 10 out of the 12 that said it can't be done. Who are you? Are you in the 10 or are you in the 2? I hope to God I'm in the 2. I want to be in the two because I want to possess the plan that God has for me. I want to walk in the fullness of what he said is mine. I want to inhabit the place that he said, my name is on the title deed, and that's my property. And guys, if they would have just checked out the land, not to, not to just look it over, but to possess it, it would have changed the way that they entered that land. In fact, the way, because they, they, they viewed it through a lens of my ability your ability will fail every time <laughs> in God's plans, okay? He has something for me to do. He has a land for me to possess, a promise to possess. And we sit in church this morning. We hear Pastor Ben. We hear Pastor Nate. We hear Pastor Landon. We hear Pastor Jake. We hear all these great men and women of God tell us the promises of God. But until you open this book for yourself and you say, God, there is a promise to me and I'm going to possess that promise. Until we get active in that, we'll never walk in the plan. We just won't. And it's sad. And I believe that God has way better for you than that. Number one, God planned for me before. You need to know this in order to function in the plan. God planned for me before. His plan for me is good, and he is with me all the way. It would have changed the entire, the entire story here had these 12 men, instead of coming back and sitting their butts down and talking about how we are grasshoppers in the sight of these giants, what would have happened if they would have all come back, the 12 of them, and been in one accord and said, you know what, we can have it, and we can do it. And there's three giants in there, but guess what? There's 600,000 of us. We're going to smoke these giants. We're going to walk all over them. It's the same thing with David and Goliath. The one giant is out there against the entire army, barking and barking and barking. And guys, you guys know the story. They were out there for, they were out there for 40 days. In the Bible, that's a time of testing. Are you going to pass this test? Are you going to fight for it? Are you going to stay in there and contend and believe that what God has said to you is yours? Or are you just going to talk about how it can't be done and it's impossible? I don't want to be in that camp. And you know what's ridiculous? All these guys that were the leaders of the tribes came back and talked about how it couldn't be done. And it was like poison to millions of people. It caused not just them and their families to suffer, it caused the whole camp to suffer. And so in my life, who is suffering when I'm not functioning in God's plan for me? Who's missing out because I'm being lazy with what God's put in my hand? We need to understand that God is a God of stewardship. And when he puts something in your hand, whether it's big or small, he expects return. And so many times we think that it's all on God, God's just gotta do everything. God will back you up if you'll step up and fight. He just needs somebody to say yes. So I'm looking at, you know, in this, in this story and how the Lord's just been talking to me and, and, and what I just heard in my heart was the plan is the promise. And so then I just began to think about the promises of God. And maybe you're in church today, you don't, you, this, this might be your first time in church. Maybe you don't really know a whole lot about God's promises, God's got a lot of promises that he's made to you. And God's not like people that break their promise. If he says it, he'll do it. That's just the way he is. And um, so he's got all these promises. And as I'm kind of closing this up today, um, I want to just kind of run some of these promises by you guys. He's got a promise for healing for you. Maybe you're in here today, you're sick. You're feeble. God issues going on in your, in your body. That's not God's plan for you. Unfortunately, there are churches all over the world that, that teach that God puts stuff on you to make you sick and to teach you lessons. That would make God a pretty sick parent. He's not. He so loves his kids. 
So he's got provisions for healing. You can find, uh, if, if you need healing in this place, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24 that by his stripes you were healed. It says in Psalms 107 verse 20 that they cried out for help and he sent in his word and he healed them and he delivered them from the door of death. It says in Acts 10.38 that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. That's God's plan. That's God's promise. You can have that in your life today. So you got healing if you need provision. Philippians 4.19 says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it is you who has given me the power to obtain wealth that you may establish the covenant which you swore to the fathers as it was this day. These are promises, guys. Second Corinthians, the whole chapter in, in, in 9 talks about sowing and reaping and how if you sow big, God will cause you to reap big. That's principle, guys. If you're a farmer in this place and you have 10 acres of land but you only plant a quarter acre, how much are you going to harvest? A quarter acre. That's just how it works. So God is a God of provision. Uh, maybe you're in this place. Um, just fertility. You want, a, you want a kid. That's a promise from God. And he'll give you a child. Amen. Uh, Psalms 113 and verse 9. Um, I didn't write these down, but uh, Psalms 113 and verse 9 and then Psalms 127 Verse 3, I want, if, if you're in here today and you say, I want to have a kid, I believe that God's put that in my heart to have this, then what do we need to do? We need to turn to God's word and find his promise, because when you find his promise, you'll find his plan. Amen? Maybe you're in here today, you have a lot of cares on your plate, working long hours, behind on rent, um, kid is sick at home, kids are failing in school, there's... There's just so many things that could get piled onto your plate as far as cares go. So what do we do? We turn to the word. First Peter chapter 5 <clears throat> in verse 7 says, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. Um, I don't know if that was First Peter 5 or 7. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Let me just read that. And so in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus is talking and he says, come to me. When's the last time you came to him? I'm not asking when's the last time you came to church. When's the last time you came to him? Because everything changes when we come to him. He can handle my not enough. He can handle all my issues in my, in my thinking. <clears throat> he can handle my downfalls and my failures. He can handle my sin. He already did. I just feel like there's probably people in here that you got cares. You don't have to. But we wouldn't know that if we didn't spend any time in God's word to find that out. Unfortunately, you know, when you, when you, when you go to school and you, you sign your kid up to play football, it would be really weird if you signed your kid up and then, you know, you're, you're kind of at home, you're waiting for a roster to come out or whatever and, and the, the schedule and, and you get uh, a phone call from the coach and he says, hey, we got the rings in, we got the trophies, we're champions. We didn't even do anything. I know, but we're champions. Something's not right here. We didn't even practice or play a game or do anything. <clears throat> I think a lot of times that that's kind of the rap that we want with God is we just want to not have to do anything and we want God to do everything and present us with all of our trophies and, and, and our well-dones. But unfortunately, not unfortunately, God's called me to do something. God's created me for a specific purpose and a specific plan. And just like he said to Jeremiah, I knew you before. Imagine this. Every person in here, there was a time 
before you were even in your mother's womb. Where God said, hey, call Jeremy in here. And Jeremy walked in and he stood before King. And King said, I need you in Arkansas. And I actually need you to be working at this place. And I've put these gifts and these callings on the inside of you and I'm gonna give you a family. And I need you to impart these things into your kids. I look at you two. There was a time before you were in your mother's womb and God said, hey, go get Courtney. Go get Landon. And at different times, you stood before God, and he put within you exactly what you need. All the gifts, all the callings, the anointings, the talents, he put it in you. And just like with Jeremiah, he said, this is what I've called you to do. And guys, it's common for you and I as people to go, I don't feel like I can do that. But you need to know that with God, because he's a planner, he never requires you to do it alone. He's always with you. He's always for you. And if you're in here today, you're dealing with healing, you're dealing with provision, you're dealing with fertility things, you're dealing with cares, you're dealing with uh, lack of peace, you're dealing with a lack of joy, there's a solution for that. And what is it? It's finding, the per- finding his promise and possessing it. It's not good enough for you to sit in church and hear me tell you about it. Possess it. What are you saying to me, God? And so just as we, we're closing up today, we're going to open this altar up. And <clears throat> what I want you to do is I want you to do what Matthew chapter 11 says. Come to me. Come to me. Not come to me. Jesus would look at you and he would say, come to me. Come. And he'd say, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. God can give you a rest. God can cause you to go home today. Maybe this is you. You just haven't slept. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. You'll go home today and you'll hit your couch and you'll be out for five hours. And you'll wake up and go, man, that was awesome. He'll meet you where you're at. He's faithful. His plan for you is his promise to you. And so as believers, what do we need to do? We need to dig in a little bit deeper to his word and hear what he has to say. If you're in here, you don't know who Jesus is, but you want to know who he is, what we're going to do at this point in the service is we're going to have a, a moment of just altar time. We're going to open this altar up. And if you want to come up here, you want to get on your knees, you want to stay in your chair, whatever you want to do, just whatever you do, come to him. And, and bring, bring it. <laughs> He's not going to be turned off by what you bring. He says, come to me. And so we're just going to worship for a little bit. If you need Jesus, I would love more than anything to pray with you, to receive Jesus, to get his involvement in your life and lead you in a prayer of salvation. But other than that, guys, we're going to spend the next five minutes just coming to him, worshiping him, bringing who we are to him and allowing him to do what he does, give us rest and give us the plan and unfold the promise in our lives. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I'll just be right over.